Hello, hello, hello. Hi, it's Belinda from Belinda's Book Nook, and I'm here to talk to you about my wrap up for March and March Mystery Madness. I read five books. Hello, it's me. Yep, it's me. I read five books. <laughs> I never see that happen, but I always wish that I could read, you know, more books. But, you know, I'm whatever, you know, as long as I'm enjoying myself, that's how I finally see it. I'm here. I was away um, in the beginning of April when I thought I was going to make this video. I have an annual trip that I do with some girlfriends for about four days and uh, it, it was incredible and fun. And now I'm back and then I came back to work and things with kids. So I never got to do that video. So now I'm making it in the end of April. I'm hopeful in another week or so I'll do my wrap up for April so I can kind of get back into the swing of things and get back into um, some kind of schedule because I miss everybody. Usually when I make my videos then I'm also out there looking at other people's videos and when I'm not, I'm usually busy. That's what keeps me away. So there's that. I'm wearing my sunshine sweater today because it's in the 50s and it's really gray and rainy outside today and it was yesterday and I'm hoping that I can send the message that we want sunshine. We had some 70 degree weather last week on a couple days and I'm um, hoping that'll come back, even though it's really warm for this time of year. I also wanted to show you guys really quickly, my brother is amazing, my brother-in-law. He makes miniature scenes. I fell in love with the trees that he used in his miniature scenes and I said, I love cherry blossom trees, could you make me one, I'll pay you. Of course he said, don't pay me, and I'm like, no, it is amazing and it's a lot of work. He made this tree for me. Can you see it? I'm gonna turn it. It's all handmade. This base here, the branches are all made out of wire and clay. And then he has a die cut machine cut out all of these flowers and they are hand glued. Each and every single one of them are hand glued on there. He put some on the bottom to make it look like some of the, you know, the petals fell off on the ground because they always do. Um, and then he put it on this beautiful base. I was going to put it in my office, but now I love it. I brought it in my bedroom and it pops on our wall. So I thought because we're in spring, I thought this would be really, really pretty to look at while I blabber on about books. So there's that. Um, so the five books. All right, let's start. I started with two audiobooks. Um, um, it was a series. I went and looked at the, um, what do you call them, uh, Goodreads, and I found a list of African-American uh, cozy mystery writers. And cozy mystery and mystery writers, I think it was. And I found a couple. And so I a list, and I basically started to, look for them. These two I found online and let's see if I can pull back up. I got them on Hoopla. The first one is by Alicia. I'm going to say it's Alicia Gordon. It could be Alexia, but I think it's Alicia Gordon. And I'm going to make sure this is the book one. Yep. Yeah. And it's book one. Um, it's called Murder in G Major and it's a Gethsemane Brown mystery series. And this is the, can I get the cover to get bigger? Oh God, no. Okay, the cover won't get bigger because I'm in Hoopla. I will bring it closer to you. That's what it looks like. It's really great um, series. I, I liked it because it was just neat to have a African-American classical musician as a main lead in a mystery series. Um, she's originally from the United States and I wanna say on the East Coast. Um, her parents are accomplished and they expect their kids to be, you know, accomplished as well. And things start going sour for her. I forgot what happens. And she ends up taking this job in this small Irish town with these, um, the school that wants to get these very rowdy and unruly boys in shape for a musical, uh, competition that's coming up. It's an orchestra. So she's going to come in and get this orchestra ready for this competition. So um, she comes to take that job and then she needs a place to stay and she ends up staying at this cottage which the um, owner lets her stay there as long as she, while he's away so he can watch, she can watch it while he's gone. So that works out well when you're kind of low on funds. Well, the, the, the catch to this is that there is a ghost. This cottage is haunted by his, um, the owner's brother and Gethsemane is like not, she's very practical. This is not, she's not believing in ghosts. And she goes through this whole thing of trying to, um, you know, is this real? I'm not, this isn't real. I need to go to sleep, wake me up. 
Um, but then eventually she does realize that he's real. Um, and then I won't go on to it anymore, but they end up working to solve a mystery. Um, he was really, really good. I liked it. I liked the narration and everything for that. So then I went on to book two. Book two is called Death in D Minor. Okay, this is the book. They changed the narrator. Whoa! Pull the, you know, the needle off the record. What do you do that for? I mean, I really like audio books and I like when you have good narration. They had somebody good. I don't know what happened to the contract or whatever. She didn't want to read the next book, whatever. They picked another person. The next person does a great job with all the voices except for the main character. So I just was kind of cringing a little bit. But I gave it, because I wanted to go on with the series, I just said, you know, and I looked to see she's still going to be the same one in the next few books. I think there's maybe three or four books in this series, if I'm correct. Um, so I'm just, I stuck with it. Um, it was really cute, too. It's another another one going along the same lines, but it's her and um, some other characters. But there are some recurring characters, too, that you'll know from the first one. But I really liked it. Um, that one I thought was really, really cool. So the next book that I read, Troy Tao from Troy Tao Reads had mentioned some cozy mysteries written by African-American authors. And I think this is also on the Goodreads list as well. And the author is Olivia Matthews. And this is Mayhem and Mass, a Sister Lou mystery. It's a first in the uh, series of books, I think. There's four, why do I keep saying three or four? Three or four books. I have, I believe, three of them. So I can continue on with it. Um, I was that confident in what he was saying that I was going to like it. And um, so I picked them all up. I think I think it's four books, though. Um, it follows this sister, which I learned in here when I, when I was listening to it. Um, she, um, that the difference between a sister and a nun, I didn't know. This is a sister, and she is trying to coordinate an event with the congregation to have her friend, who is a very reputable researcher and religious speaker, I believe, um, but he's got some controversial theories. And she finds that some of the sisters are reluctant for him to come to speak. Um, somebody ends up dying, I'm not gonna say who in the story, and she, Sister Lou, her nephew, and a new news reporter end up becoming the sleuths in the book to solve the case. Quick, fast, fun, delightful. It was really neat to listen to. They, they they made a very refreshing sister. She wasn't perfect, perfect. You know, sometimes people would say things to her um, and, you know, she would she would think things that she probably should, she definitely shouldn't say. So she just kept it real. So, you know, that nuns are not, you know, perfect people that think happy things all the time. Um, but it was a very, very, very cute start to a series. I would recommend that one as well. Um, the next one was my favorite book of the, um, month and it's Land of Shadows by Rachel Housel Hall. It's a, de a detective Eloise Norton novel. And, um, I think this one is three books, but this author has come out with a, a book that is not in this series that came out this month. And I'm, because I like this so much and I've started the second book this month, um, I definitely want to pre-order that book because I think that she's a really talented writer and I would like to support her. Um, this one is a, a police procedural detective no novel, so it's a little different. This is more of a cozy. This one is a little bit more grit, but not so much. Like, I don't like things that are too graphical. It follows uh, Detective Lou, and she's a black woman with her, her partner, um, and they are working to try to solve these cases of, um, in their, t in Los Angeles, they're in Los Angeles and her sister in years back had gone missing and they never solved the case. So when she's solving cases, she's always looking to see if she can find a connection so she can find out what happened to her sister. There's a developer in the town, a very wealthy developer in the town that she believes has something to do with it. Um, so there's that. And I like how this book explores. She does bring in facts and history of the 80s, 90s, and 70s in Los Angeles. She does talk about when these these big developers come in to poor um, minority-filled neighborhoods 
and build um, and basically push them out by putting in condos and things like that. What happens and, you know, things that, you know, people don't always think about when there's all these flashy, beautiful buildings, but what are happening to the people there? Um, she does talk about some serious things in here mixed in with the story. I love the dialogue in this book so much. I love the way that she talked with her partner. I loved um, her vulnerability with her own personal life that was explored. It's just a fantastic book. I think I think everybody would like it. <laughs> and, and not everybody, but I liked it. Just try it. Um, favorite of the month. Reading the second one now. I'm trying to talk fast because I, I did this video already before. And it was too long. Way too long. This is the final book that I read. Look. I saw this when it was out before. It was a popular book. Everybody wanted to read it um, because, you know, it was just everywhere. And I just couldn't take it because I was like, okay, you know, I just don't don't want to read it because everybody's reading it and talking about it right now. Well, the second reason why I didn't want to read it is because the title. I thought the title is like, it's like when you're standing in the grocery line and you're waiting to pay for your groceries and you see the National Enquirer at the corner of your eye and you're trying to read it without like anybody knowing that you're reading it because you know you know it's not true and it's just trash and whatever but you keep reading and then you get to the part where like there's another title but it's right where the bar is that holds the the National Enquirer in so the only way for you to read that or see the photo fully is to pull it up but you won't do it you won't do it it's like a gimmick this I felt was like a gimmick title so I just that was like a turn off to me but it was a Nigerian author and I wanted to give it a try. It's a short book for people that like short books. I didn't like the ending. I didn't connect to the characters. I started reading it into about 40, page 40, no, maybe 20 or 30 pages in. And then I ended up listening to the audiobook. The audiobook is fantastic. It was a better experience for me than reading the book because I don't think I would finish the book. Partly for those reasons I couldn't connect with the characters and I just, it wasn't my type of story. And I hated the ending. Um, but I would say for people to give it a try because there are some people that did like this book and I just, you know, it, of course there's going to be people that like and don't like, so it's not a bad book. It just wasn't my cup of tea, but, um, it has a phenomenal cover and I will definitely support this author in the future to see what else she writes. But that's what I read for March. I'd love to see what you guys have read. I'm going to come peek around and see what everybody else has been doing. I have just been... I've been reading a lot this month too, so I have some good books to talk to you guys about this month um, of April. But March was a good mystery. Um, I did read some that I owned and I read some that, you know, were borrowed. So um, I'm really looking forward to reading some more. It's I'm kind of um, dipping or mixing in mysteries with some of my other books right now because I've had a fun time reading them all for that whole month. So I hope you're all well and I will see you guys soon, okay? I will talk to you soon. Bye.